But also there are some ideas with the queen going to the king side over the fourth rank. In the game, bishop to d6. And, well, this is a good moment for a Greek gift sacrifice. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we are going to learn how to play Koli system. There are many advantages of playing this opening. Number one, it's a system, which means that you don't need to learn a lot of theory. Number two, it's very solid. In Koli system, your pawn structure is going to be set up almost in a perfect way, where you're controlling the center, but you don't have weaknesses. It's not like in our openings, like for example, Rui Lopez or Sicilian. These are very strong openings, of course, but it's a different kind of play. Well, you have some weaknesses, but maybe your opponent has also some problems and it's a different kind of game. This time your structure is very solid. You don't have weaknesses, but you're still trying to get some small advantage in the middle game. Number three, you will have very interesting attack possibilities in the middle game. Even when it's a solid opening, once you get into the middle game, there's a very interesting and strong plan because your pieces are aiming for the castling. So you will have very good and clear attack possibilities. Number four, it's versatile and flexible. This means that you can play Kali system basically against any opening that black can play and at the same time it's flexible because the order of the moves doesn't really matter that much we already said it's a system so what really matters is the position for your pawns and your pieces in general number five is easy to learn and play as it is a system you will learn it very easily just watching this video you will be ready to play Kali system against your opponents and also it's very easy to play because well you know the the idea in the middle game is pretty straightforward you will have some small advantage very often controlling the center pieces aiming for the kathleen so the idea is very clear and very easy to play and number six white can play for the greek gift sacrifice it can happen more or less frequently as white pieces are already able to jump to the king side and they are in the right squares like the knight the bishop and the queen and also we should highlight that black knight on f6 is very often going to be either traded somewhere or kicked out of this square f6 so that makes uh, this greek gift sacrifice even more likely to happen so let's learn how to play Kali system so d4 d5 knight f3 knight f6 we play e3 black plays e6 and then after bishop d3 c5 and c3 we are officially in Kali system of course we already said that this is a scam it's a system so there is not like a specific order, there is not like a forced order for the development, for the moves. But well, in general, they accept this position as the main position of the Kali system theory. So how is this going to work? Well, in Kali system, we are going to bring the pawns like this. It's a very solid structure. It's like a V. And of course, we have very good protection for our central pawn. About the pieces, we are going to bring a bishop to this three, a knight to f3. Uh, the knight is coming over d2 and this bishop is usually developed later uh, probably in the middle game and probably you have already noticed that uh, this scheme is basically the same as london system there is only one difference and it is like the bishop is inside this chain of pawns and probably you're thinking how is that good why is this a good idea how is there a line that we call Kali system when we have london system well these scams are basically like cousins. Yeah, of course you don't develop the bishop. That sounds like a bad thing, but not so much. And one good thing is that you don't waste a move by moving the bishop there. And probably very often we need to play h3. So actually you don't waste two moves because in London system, you need to make sure that your opponent cannot get your bishop. So very often we need to play the move h3. Of course, our bishop won't be there on c1 for the whole game. At some point we want to develop that bishop, but that's another good thing. Like. Eventually, once we castle, we're going to play e4 later, and then we can decide, depending on the position, depending on what has happened up to that moment, you can decide which is the best square for that bishop, because not necessarily the bishop has to go to f4, very often your bishop can go to g5, where it can still be annoying. And also in some lines, uh, the bishop can be developed over a uh, b2. So, you know, Kali system is basically a London system where our bishop is still inside which is not really so bad because uh, we have some ideas with that bishop still on c1 well uh, we should say that if you don't play c3 here we can still play b3 and then we solve the problem of the bishop directly over the fianchero very early in the opening and this is what we call Kali sucretor it's another very interesting line that we might cover later 
in this channel. So let's go back to Coli system. And after c3, black is going to play here knight to c6. This is like the main line. But also I wanted to say uh, this is also a theoretical move, knight bd7. So I wanted to talk a little about this line. Because very often in the main line with knight c6, we're going to be taking here on c5. Because we want to break on e4, um, we will talk about that later. But I wanted to say that when the knight goes to d7, we are not really going to capture here on c5. So we continue with a normal plan, normal development. We still want to play e4, but in general, when the knight is on d7, that's like some kind of rule. We are not going to take here on c5 because then the knight takes and the knight attacks your bishop. That's something, of course, we don't want. Because also we need to say that this knight on d7 is blocking the bishop, is blocking the queen, is colliding with another knight. So it's not so great. So you don't want to improve the knight and improve black pieces in general. That's why knight here we don't capture on c5 as a general rule. So let's go back to the main line where back plays knight c6. And well, here we can continue with knight bd2, as we already mentioned earlier, bishop to d6. And again, we need to highlight something here. Black can also play with bishop to e7, that's totally acceptable, theoretical actually. But we should say that this is not really better than bishop d6. Bishop d6 is going to be the main line and there is a reason. And it is like, if your opponent plays with bishop e7, you can still play the same thing as we're going to do against bishop to d6. But also you have another option that we can try. And it is like, you can use the square e5 and you can also play e4 later, reinforcing your knight there on e5. And if you can actually castle knight e5, f4, so play something like that, uh, your attack possibilities again are going to be very dangerous because your knight is great, your pawn structure is very strong in the center, and you can lift your rook, so you can connect the rook with the bishop, with the queen, sometimes even g4 and g5 to get rid of the knight. So the attack might be very serious in this kind of structures. So, you know, bishop e7 is not really changing anything, it's basically the same thing where you have another option, if you want, of playing with the knight on e5 and the pawn on a4. Well, uh, bishop d6 is the main line, and here we're going to castle, black should castle as well. And, well, there are some things we should highlight here. For example, uh, the plan is to break on e4, and maybe you're thinking, well, what if they play e5 first, uh, before we actually play e4? And here, uh, this is actually a theoretical move, in some way, but it's not really strong. There's a principle behind this move that they are not really meeting here. And that is, don't break the center when the king is still there, right? So when you have not castled, you should not break the center. So that's exactly what black is playing here. So we're going to stick to that principle and we're going to try to open the center as black king is still there. So probably a very good move here is going to be e4. Actually, a normal refutation here is like pawn takes pawn, bishop takes, and then uh, e4 after that. And we're going to be in a slightly better position. But I really like this idea of counter-attacking in the center, breaking the position. The engine thinks this is like equal. But interesting fact, it's only equal if black can find c takes d4, which is not so easy because we have many ways to capture here and play in this position or maybe not capture at all. So there are many moves for black. It's not easy to find the, the only move that gets equal position. And with the king in the center, our king already castled. I really like this break here on e4. For engines, the best move is a d takes e5 here, but well, at a human level, I really like this idea of counter-attacking over there. So e5 with the king in the center, not a very good idea. And also I wanted to say a quick development, for example, with b6 is also not so great because we can break again. And in general, white is going to be a little better. For example, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, and then bishop takes, we are taking the knight, they should develop the bishop, and we can bring the rook to e1 with pressure here rook on the same file as the king so if they try to castle here now there might be some problems for black because the great gift sacrifice is going to work really well here you can sacrifice the bishop knight g5 queen h5 all those ideas that you already know with the rook on e1 and the bishop on c1 the attack is going to be really serious here so you know b6 at this point is not really a great idea because once you break and you trade that knight the attack is serious and the Greek gift sacrifice possibilities uh, are really big then. So once we castle, the most normal move for black is to castle as well. And in this position, it, we already want to play e4, right? We are like ready to break there. So this is one of the ideas in a Kali system. Like you are going to break once you are ready. So in the middle game, once your pieces are in really good position, once you are 
reinforcing that break. Your, your king is already safe, your rook can come to e1, your queen is also able to jump ahead if necessary. Well, then let's break now. That's like the approach they are using here. So they delay the break, but once they play it, it's really interesting and dangerous. So in this position, uh, before we break, we want to capture here because we want to make sure that they are not trading here and created, creating an isolated queen pawn, which by the way is totally playable. So there's nothing wrong with e4, pawn takes, pawn takes here. We can still play with the isolated queen pawn because there is enough compensation. So it's totally okay. But well, in general, if you can avoid it, it's going to be slightly better. So this move is the one I really recommend here. It takes e5 first. And when they take here back, then we can play e4. So in this position, we want to say that there is another line and it is when you play before. And if you do this, you're playing like a semi slav with a tempo ahead. So this is like a different approach. So let me show you something really quickly. So when we play uh, with black pieces, like something like this, uh, this is what we call semi slav And do you see it's the same uh, structure here? So in that position that we were analyzing, basically we are following uh, that approach. Uh, we can play with before. It's a typical structure for semi slav with black pieces. Uh, the good thing is that we could have an extra tempo as we played the first move this time. For this video, I want to focus on the more classical Kali uh, system idea, but we should not forget that there are all plans with b4. Well, after e4, uh, the right move for black is going to be queen c7, or the best move for black is this one. But there are some things we should analyze, and I guess you're thinking about this. For example, black can play here d takes e4, knight takes e4, and I want to talk about two options for black. Option number one, the trade of queens here, because probably you're thinking about this and saying, well, I don't like this line, my opponent is trading queens, how am I going to play in the middle game? This is just a draw or things like that, uh, because I know it's a very common way to think, right? We don't want to trade queens very often, especially playing with white, uh, something we don't like too much. So I'm going to talk a little about that. And also I'm going to talk about the line where black plays a bad move, but it's also a typical mistake. I mean, a com common mistake, very easy to play. Something normal, like just retreating the bishop back to b6. So I'm going to talk a little about those things, uh, about the trade of queens, like knight takes knight, bishop takes, queen takes queen, and rook takes queen. I want to say that you should not be afraid of a line like this one, because white is going to be actually clearly better in this endgame. So there are no queens on the board, but your position is much better. Your pieces are more active, you have more development, and also you are controlling the only open file on the board. I'm saying we have more development because actually we can develop the bishop very easily as they cannot do the same thing, right? They cannot play bishop here. Also, they cannot play b6 because the knight is hanging. So it's not going to be easy to make this bishop play for black as we can develop our bishop very easily in a super active square. At the same time, we're controlling the open file as we were saying. And also another thing, we already have a pawn majority on the queen side. That's not like a huge advantage because the passed pawn is probably on the C file instead of the A file. So it's probably not that great, but I still think it's interesting that our pawn majority is over there. So we can also highlight that. So in general, you should not be afraid of this endgame. It's much better for white. So if you can get into something like this, uh, you're going to be better. Let me show you what happened in a game between two masters. Black played f5, and then after bishop takes knight, b takes c6, and uh, there's this move knight e5. This position is already much better for white. They lost the two bishops, but now they are getting uh, one pawn for free here, and uh, they are still much more active. In that game, black played bishop e7, but actually uh, black is going to be lost very soon. After knight e7, there is a fork. Black can play rook d8 is spinning, so we cannot take the bishop directly, but white could play here bishop to g5. And this position is totally won because now the rook is defended, the rook is attacked, and the bishop is attacked. So white is just much better decisive advantage here. After bishop b6, bishop takes rook. White won this game just a few moves later. So long story short, don't be afraid of trading queens in a position where you're actually better. It's an endgame, but our pieces are much better, so we are good. About the line where black just retreats the bishop, this is a mistake because, well, first of all, we can just play bishop g5 here. That's already getting a huge advantage, and it's probably the best move. But also this line is very simple and very interesting. We can play here knight takes knight, and black has to capture with the pawn, which already gives white 
an important advantage as we are playing bishop a6 and all things. But also we need to say that if black plays here, queen takes f6, the queen is going to be trapped. We are going to be able to capture that piece by playing here bishop g5. This is a decisive advantage. It's a nice trick, by the way, and very likely to happen. The moves are very natural, so anyone can get into something like this. Something we should say about this position once you break here on e4 is that according to engines, this position is equal, so no one has the advantage. But something really, really interesting. When we analyze the performance for white in online databases, we can see something amazing. And it's like white is performing here for a great 60%, which is very big, but also even bigger when we see that black is performing only for 32%. This is a big difference, almost 30% points here. So that's a huge advantage. And also, even more important when we analyze that it's an equal position. This means that even when the position is equal, it's much easier, much simpler and clearer to play with white pieces. And of course, uh, white is the one with real attack possibilities in these positions. So after queen c7, main line for black, we can play here queen to e2. And well, this is a very natural move, just reinforcing the center, bringing in the rook, connecting queen and bishop over there as well. Maybe some ideas with e5, which might be very interesting, right? Because if you get rid of the knight, suddenly uh, the ideas with bishop takes a7 can happen. About this uh, Greek gift sacrifice ideas, uh, there's something we need to say, and it is like, watch out for false Greek gift sacrifices. Because the fact that you have the bishop, the knight, and the queen over there doesn't necessarily mean that the sacrifice is going to work. Very often it will, but do not uh, think automatically that it's winning for you. Let me show you something that happened in some game. Uh, in this position here, uh, white played bishop takes a7. Uh, let's take a look at the position. Everything looks correct, right? I mean, it looks like we can play this, we can play this, and then we can play queen h5. So this looks like a very natural Greek gift sacrifice position, but well, not really. After bishop takes, king takes knight g5, black plays king g8, and we play queen h5. Looks like we are winning the game. Looks like this is the position we wanted, but there is a surprise. There is a very important defensive move for black here, and this is one queen d3. After queen d3, they defend, they will come back very soon, they will offer trade, and there is no more attack here. And this is just a normal position where black has a piece up. So, you know, analyze very well before you sacrifice the bishop, make sure you really have a strong attack then. I'm going to show you some examples about a good play in the middle game. And at the same time, we can see some Greek gift sacrifices that worked very well in those examples. But before we get into model games and typical tactics for Kali system, I want to answer three frequently asked questions that I hear a lot about this uh, kind of positions. So one question is what happens if black plays c4 at some point in the opening or the mid game in a Kali system game uh, that looks scary, black gets some space over there, what happens with this? Well, actually we should say that in general c4 is not really a problem for white because we can retreat the bishop here to c2 and the bishop is still very active and the fact that the pawn advances to c4 means that the pawn is not putting more pressure here. So the great thing is that if there is no pressure on d4, you can play e4 much more easily so that's the idea c4 bishop c2 and we want to play e4 very quickly as soon as possible once we are ready it's going to be easy to play that break on e4 so in general c4 is not a problem when we can play bishop c2 another frequently asked question is what if black plays in Indian defense or queen's Indian defense or in general any other defense uh we should say that Kali system works more or less fine against anything your opponent can play so in general if your opponent plays any other system, any other development, any other structure, uh, we can still play the same triangle here with the pawn structure. We continue with a very natural development for our pieces. We still want to play four later, so we can fight for the center and improve our bishop. So in general, this is going to work. Of course, every position is different, so always analyze and uh, take a look at the specificities of the position. But as a general rule, it's still going to be fine against other defenses. And finally, can black play h6 to avoid the Greek gift sacrifice? 
So is this like a solution to the problem? Uh, we want to say that very often your opponent is going to play this idea. And definitely you won't be able to play the Greek Gift Sacrifice whenever that happens at some point. But the good thing is that you will have other sacrifices, right? Because once they play a6, that's a weakness. So you might have ideas with Bishop takes pawn later in the middle game. And also the other thing is that they are wasting the move, right? So they have to play this to defend. Well, they are just wasting the moves. You have an extra tempo to improve, attack, create threats or anything. So in general, a6 is not like it solves all the problems. It defends against the Greek gift sacrifice definitely, but that might be other ideas for white. So let me show you moral games and typical tactics. So you get some idea about how is the middle game going to be. So in this game, we have the takes e5, we should take c5 and e4, as we already mentioned in the theory, in the main ideas, black plays here, queen c7, queen e2, and this is something we already saw earlier. In this game, black plays bishop to d6, and rook e1 is totally normal, you want to improve the rook, and this is going to be a half open file very often. d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, and observe after this simplification how all white pieces are really, really active. We have a battery here, targeting a7 of course, but also the bishop is great, even when it is on c1, by the way, uh, undeveloped, uh, it's still a great piece, so uh, it's not really a big disadvantage uh, that the bishop is not developed in this line. Black plays g6, and also something I wanted to highlight is that, observe the position here, black pieces are not defending the king, observe this color of the board, how there are no black pieces over there, black pieces are either in the center or on the queen side, but they're not really defending the king. So that's like a problem when we have so many pieces really active aiming for the castling. Black plays e6, bishop here to a6, taking advantage of the new weakness, rook e8, and then queen h4. There are ideas with queen here, ideas with knight g5. So this is very strong, knight to e5 here, and this is actually a mistake. And here white is getting a decisive advantage after knight takes e5. Bishop takes e5. This position is just winning for white. We can play here bishop to e5. And the rook is somewhat trapped here as going to d8 or e7 doesn't really work because the queen has to defend the bishop and also it could have to defend the rook then. So that might be an idea with rook takes bishop or something. So for example, rook here, rook takes bishop and we're getting the rook here. So that's what happens if the rook moves, but also uh, for example, bishop d7 is more or less the same thing, right? The queen is overloaded, defending the two bishops. We can just trade bishops and get e5. So in the game, black just plays rook f8, accepting that they're losing material. So bishop takes f8, at least they get the dark squares bishop, but well, the position is going to be very bad. After king takes, queen takes a7, and then a6, bishop d3. And after bishop g7, the attack continues with rook e3. Then after e5, boom, bishop takes g6, we have to discover that king and continue with the attack. f takes, rook check on f3, bishop to f5, and then queen takes g6. And this is winning the game for white. This is another nice example. Again, d takes e5 was played, bishop takes e5, and then e4. After pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight takes knight, bishop takes, and then queen c7, we continue with the normal ideas, queen e2, as we saw, in previous games, black plays a5 and then queen to c4. We're attacking the bishop here, but also there are some ideas with the queen going to the king side over the fourth rank. In the game, bishop to d6, and well, this is a good moment for a Greek gift sacrifice in a slightly different format. Here we can play bishop takes, king takes, and then queen to h4 after king g8, knight g5. And well, this position is already very good for white. Rook d8 was played, queen h7, king f8, and then queen h8. Check, we're extracting the king, king to e7, and then queen takes g7. This is very dangerous pressure here, but also the bishop and the rook can join in some lines here. So the attack is still promising. Black plays rook f8, and then this move, knight, to h7, not only attacking the rook, also some ideas with bishop to g5. In the game, king e8, knight to f6 check, king e7, and then 
this move bishop to g5. Once the bishop gets involved, the position is already winning for white. We have too many threats and the king cannot really escape from the discovered that is coming. In this one, same position, d takes, bishop takes and e4. And then after pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes and bishop takes. Black played here, queen to b6. And one more time we can highlight this color of the board is totally unprotected. Black pieces are not really defending, they are on the queen side. So that looks very suspicious. It's very tempting to try a Greek gift sacrifice. So bishop takes a7, king takes, and then knight to g5. We should say that in this position, uh, the right move is king g6, and black is not really lost here. The position is unclear, it's complicated. For example, king here, queen g4 is very often the right continuation, but then they can play a5. Then queen h4, we have some ideas over there. So this is unclear. It's complicated, but not necessarily winning for white. So uh, anything can still happen here. But in the end, black plays king g8. And then, well, after queen h5, this is just a uh, winning for white. Black plays rook d8. And very often when we have something like this, instead of giving the checks directly, we capture the pawn first, and then we give the checks, right? So queen takes pawn first, king h8, queen here, king g8. And now we continue extracting the king. But the difference is that we can get g7 also with check, so it could be something like this, check, check, and then we can capture the pawn on g7. That's the whole point of taking f7 first. Well, black plays king d6, and the king so exposed is going to be uh, in big danger, knight f7, check, we get the rook, and then after king takes, rook d1, check, we want to involve more pieces, of course we're not winning with only one queen, and after king e8, now we're trying to involve the bishop, so let's give a check, to force the king to the dark square, even when they block, we give another check, and well, now the only move is king here, and bishop g5 is coming, so at this point, black resigned here. Finally, let's take a look at this tactic, a more or less typical position, where it is white to move, and they can win with a really nice combination. So I will say it very soon, in this game, white played the amazing move, knight to f6. The idea is that if the king moves, well, we're just taking on h7, we're also bringing the queen to h5, we have many threats, so let's assume that if the king moves, uh, this is decisive advantage, which it is. So let's analyze what happens when they take the knight, that's like the main line we should uh, analyze, of course, because we're losing a knight. Well, this time, uh, we can continue with the attack on h7, that square is very weak, so that's the idea of the continuation. We're going to focus on targeting a7. They don't have a way to defend it. So we can just play here queen check first, forcing the king to the corner, and then queen to a5. With this nice combination, a is winning already for white. There's nothing they can do. This is unstoppable. Queen takes a7 and winning the game. One more time, black pieces are not really defending the king. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you have any question, let me know in the comments. Check out this video over here. I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Keep improving your chess skills and enjoy the game. Play the right move. See you on the next.